started us going live on YouTube. So if you, for any reason you have to bow out, totally understandable, um, just check out the library's YouTube page uh, later on in the day and you find the full recording of today's uh, webinar. Um, so just to start with a little bit of housekeeping, um, I'm Lauren, I'm the branch manager of the Glenwood Springs Library. Uh, thanks for coming to our virtual branch. We're hoping to open our branches again on April 30th, but or after April 30th. Um, please keep an eye on our website and on our Facebook page to see the latest updates and to find uh, lots more information, including um, upcoming events that we have. I'm just going to introduce you to your controls. Um, so you are part of a webinar here. Um, so your interaction is a little limited, but we do have some ways that you can interact with our panelists here. If you look at the bottom of your screen, there is a chat button. You're able to chat with uh, the panelists and with each other. Uh, we encourage you to do so to talk about, uh, to comment on, on um, sort of the the things being said, to offer your own um, experience, and to say hi to each other. However, if you have a question for the panel, uh, also down below, you will see a little thing that says Q and A. So that is sort of the official spot for you to type in your questions. We won't really be monitoring the chat, monitoring the chat so much, but the Q and A, uh, I will definitely be monitoring and can pass on those questions to Jerry. Um, as those uh, pop up. And if you have any technical issues or it, at all, um, feel free to um, put in a Q&A directly towards me. I'm under Garfield County Libraries and I'll see if I can help you out. And with that, I'm gonna pass this over to Jerry. Thank you, Lauren. Um, as Lauren said, I am Jerry Rahal. I am the publisher and marketing director of the Post Independent. And I just wanna make sure that everyone can see my screen. Uh, are we good on that panelists? Awesome. So we are gonna be talking about COVID-19. Oh, got a little ahead of myself there. Um, and uh, um, COVID-19 relief for small businesses and, uh, you know, Glad to be part of this presentation today. It's being brought to you by the Glen Springs Chamber Resort Association, the Post Independent, Colorado Mountain College, Urban Coffee, Blizzard Press, and Garfield County Libraries. It's a, one of the things that's been great is uh, how much uh, partnership is going on during this crisis, um, which is needed. Uh, today, we are joined by Andrea Stewart, who's the Executive Director of the Carbondale Chamber of Commerce, uh, Angie Anderson, who is the President and CEO of the Glen Springs Chamber Resort Association, uh, Maureen Stepp of the, the Assistant Dean of Instruction and Business and Technology at Colorado Mountain College and Tanya Pereira. Uh, Tanya, if I say your last name wrong, I apologize. Uh, you want to go ahead and say it for me so I don't make a fool of myself? Yeah, so I'm um, Tanya Perea Dos. Okay, uh, CEO and Director of your Western Garfield County Chamber of Commerce. Now, we normally do some different kind of introductions, but we're going to do a little more interactive one today. If you've been to some of the things I've moderated in the past, I like to play a game of who is this. So, uh, Lauren, if you can put the poll up, I'd appreciate it. All right. So, who previous? So, uh, in attendance, you can click on this. Uh, who previously held a position as a marketing coordinator at the University of uh, Wyoming Athletic Department? So, if you want to click on that. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, uh, who previously, can I scroll down? Oh, who previously held a position as a commercial and consumer loan processor? Who previously held a position working for the uh, Glenwood Springs Chamber? And who has had a pet named Bennett? Um, who used to have a goldfish named Dog? Who has four dogs and two horses? Who has a dog named Stryker? Whose spirit animal is an eagle? Whose spirit animal is a bear? Whose spirit is a giraffe? And so, uh, Lauren, will you let me know when people have voted? Will do. I'm just gonna put Andrea down for everything. I can't, I can't vote. 
All right. You ready? All right, we have 36% of voted. All right, come on now. This, there's some fabulous prizes if you vote. Um, as we continue to vote, we're just gonna go through this on the screen. You'll see the question. Uh, uh, I'll be directing it to certain people. Uh, people, other people on the panel will interject. If you have questions, Go ahead and put them in the chat function and then uh, Lauren will let me know, but we'll also have a segment at the end where people can ask, uh, ask questions as well. Uh, we have questions ranging from funding to you know, marketing to how to help your business to you know, how to stay connected. So we have a lot of great questions uh, to be asked. So, all right, let's go. Uh, Lauren, are we, are we good? Well, we're at 45%. So should we go ahead and end it? Let's go ahead and end it. All right. All right, so we have the results. All right, can everyone see the results here? I cannot. Hmm. Ah, I need to share the results. Can you tell us my first time doing a poll? There you go. So who previously held the position of this? Uh, pretty mixed. Um, who, who, who was that? Andrea, yep. Uh, how long were you there for? So I um, was an intern and then I went full time after I graduated. So I put in a total of five years um, with the athletic department. Nice. Uh, who previously was uh, held a position as a commercial and consumer loan? Again, pretty mixed. Um, and that was uh, Tanya. How long were you doing that for? Um, so I started out, I worked for a couple of banks here within the Roaring Fork Valley, but ended with um, Alpine Bank, and I was there for almost six years. Uh, not shocking, uh, Angie started her career with the Chamber and has continued to work there. So how long have you been there? Well, I started there when I was in high school as an intern and then went to college and worked um, different jobs on the Front Range and then came back 12 years ago. So. Um, if you add it all up, I don't know, a long time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Who here has a pet named Bennett? Who is that? Angie? What kind of, what kind of pet is that? He's a dog. Dog? Yep. Who used to, this is my favorite. Who used to have a goldfish named Dog? <laughs> uh, and, and how long did that goldfish last? Um, you know, it was a couple years, but come to find out, I uh, think my parents got us a few goldfishes named Doc <laughs> over the years. Nice. Uh, who has four dogs and two horses? Tanya, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. <laughs> and then Stryker, a dog named Stryker, uh, Maureen. Uh, yep, that would be mine. <laughs> He's a crazy puppy mix breed. But lots of fun. <laughs> and always my favorite question, who is whose spirit animal is an eagle? That would be mine as well. <laughs> why, why an eagle? Uh, it just seems like they show up um, in times of my life when I need some inspiration. And I love the way that they, uh, they're majestic in the way they soar. And I don't know, just I've always loved eagles. <laughs> whose spirit animal is a bear? That is... Tanya, you guys got that mostly right. Why bear? Um, well, mainly because I like to hibernate in the winter time. <laughs> um, but um, I also just always connected with bears and um, I'm very protective and fiercely loyal. So I've been told I'm a bear. Okay. Uh, whose spirit animal is a giraffe? That is Andrea. Yep. And I loved your response to that. Why don't you explain why the giraffe is your favorite? Yeah, so um, the giraffe has a long neck, which I really honestly do, um, <laughs> but they're not afraid to stick their neck out. So really, you know, standing up um, for what I believe in, especially as it pertains to small business. Um, also, giraffes are fast. They can run up to 40 miles an hour. I wish I was that fast, but I am a runner. So um, that just really relates to me. And then Angie, what was your spirit animal? 
A hummingbird. Okay. And why hummingbird? <laughs> um, because they 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 spread happiness and joy, which I try to do that as much as possible. Um, and also would say that they they cherish the the small things in life. So. Yes. So there's a whole bigger bio between all those people, but I, I think we hit the high points for, for everybody. So um, so our first question um, is, uh, there's so much information out there. Where can I find accurate and concise information for my business? So uh, Angie, can you start us off? Sure. Um, you know, I think the chambers play a really, really strong role in this area. There is a lot of information out there. Um, and it's sometimes it can be hard to distill it and determine, you know, what's what. And so um, we have the ability to get information from a lot of different resources and can kind of present it in a way that hopefully makes sense. So um, I think all of us have business resource pages on our website, um, which really are going to direct you to the experts in those those areas. Um, the SBDC is, is a great resource. The um, Office of Economic Development and International Trade. Um, so all of those, those resources are available on our websites. And anytime we get information from, from those sources, um, we've, I believe, all been sharing them in our newsletters, which have probably been more frequent than ever, um, especially in, in the beginning of this, this crisis. So um, I think starting with your chamber is a good place to start, at least to, to start getting to where you need to go. Uh, any other comments on that question? No? Yeah, um, I'll chime in. So um, I, I agree with everything Angie said. Um, I think that, um, I think SBA, I don't think that was mentioned. Um, they're a great resource as well. Um, I think that the Chambers of Commerce have um, a great organization behind us um, where we're part of the Colorado Chamber of Commerce and um, there's also the United States Chamber of Commerce. So um, they really have their boots on the ground as well um, for information um, and kind of help us filter all of that. And um, um, so I, they've been a great resource for, um, for our chamber as well. Great, and I might just add, in addition to what's been mentioned, also we really rely on um, the public health sectors within Garfield County and the state. So they're definitely the experts when it comes to public health. So please ensure that you're also staying up to date on um, the Garfield County public health as well as the state for that information. There's a lot of information going out right now and you know, almost an overabundance of it, but the chambers are a great place to, uh, to find some concise information. And I know like I contact the, these people all the time to uh, find out what's going on, so. Mm -hmm. um, so, Maureen, how can local businesses find help with CMC? Um, so, CMC um, is doing a lot to help our communities, and um, the best place to go and look for that information is just go to coloradomtn.edu. Um, backslash CMC responds. There's a video from our president, Dr. Carrie Hauser, and a list of all the things that uh, we are doing. One of the biggest things we're doing is taking um, some of the, uh, the federal relief funds that the college is receiving and offering free tuition um, fees and books for the summer semester. Um, we are gonna be all on offering classes all online. Uh, but it's free for um, any in-district student, new or old. Um, it's free for any in-state student who was a student in the spring. Uh, and it's also free for any um, employee who was displaced, like if they were working for one of the ski resorts and got laid off, um, and there's just a form to fill out to show that they, have, they are a displaced worker. Um, so we're really excited about that. We're also, um, there's lots of other things we are doing. Our libraries and our librarians are offering free help to businesses on research. Um, and so there's, there's lots of different, th we're offering tutoring services, not only to our students, but K through 12 students. So we're doing some online tutoring. Um, we've increased our scholarships and uh, we have a no barriers fund, which helps students 
with financial needs, which is a barrier for them completing their courses. So we've ex um, extended those funds. So there's a whole list of things on um, our main webpage. Uh, so, oh, and the biggest one, sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, we're doing um, small business consulting. So as most um, people know, we have a limited number of SBDC consultants in our valley and valleys, sorry. And um, so we're opening up um, some, C, um, some consulting, some small business consulting. And on that main page, there's a link to fill out a form um, and they will uh, put you in touch with either one of our business faculty, one of our consultants, or point you in the right direction for where you might need help. Um, so we're using some of our business expertise to help the small business community in this time. Um, and in the near future, we will be offering free business workshops um, for businesses as well. So um, keep an, a, an eye out on that web page to see which workshops will be coming. So besides the free college classes um, for anybody looking to take, you know, a full business or a college class, we're also going to be offering short term workshops on specific topics for businesses. So for a lot of businesses that are, have either reduced business or they're closed right now, this would be a good time to reinvest in themselves and their knowledge. So, um, but check out that website and, and we'll be adding to it as, as the summer goes on. And if you guys in the chat, you can see the uh, Lauren's been adding in the various websites, including the uh, CMC website. And so there's some great stuff there. If someone is struggling with like some of the forms, Maureen, is there, a, a, is there information on the website about, about who to contact or is there someone that you can recommend they contact? Yeah, so when, when you click on the link for business consulting and training, um, the main contact is Randy Rudasics, who runs uh, the Yampa Valley Entrepreneurship Center up in Steamboat, and he's coordinating all of those requests and um, helping to coordinate which business classes we're offering. So um, he would be a main contact, or you can also contact me. Uh, my email address is just mstep at coloradomtn.edu, and I'd be happy to point people in the right direction as well. And Lauren, will we be sending out all these email contacts uh, at, at the end of the session to the people attended? Um, I certainly can if, if the folks would like. All right. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, our next question is for uh, Andrea. Um, I am I'm a small business and have applied for the various loan and grant opportunities. Now what? Like what, what's the other than waiting? What? Right. Um, so, you know, in addition to what Maureen mentioned with all of the additional online learning opportunities, just encouraging businesses to um, potentially stay up on their business and continue to keep um, their employees engaged. That could be something along the lines of learning a new skill, uh, you know, really dabbling into social media if people have not done that yet, perhaps setting up a website or um, their Facebook. Also, you know, just go in and update your copy on your website. I feel right now too, everyone is um, a little bit more forgiving than not. So if, you know, if you're trying out a new skill or like us um, with Zoom or I've been doing a lot of updates in Google Docs and learning um, that skill myself. And so I think it's just an opportunity um, to learn something new and also to do um, continued education for um, your employees, updating handbooks, job descriptions, things like that, that, you know, we always say, oh, when I have time, I'd like to do this. And I know that everyone's up to their ears in other things that are happening right now, but it's sometimes nice to have a project that you can just um, check off the list. Okay. One of the things too, and if you said this, I apologize, but uh, if you can update your Google My Business, um, it has such a huge impact on your SEO. Um, so you can update your website and go in and, and, and get some keywords in there, but go in, this is a great time to learn how, if you don't know how to, to update your Google My Business or just continue to update it because it does play, I believe, about 25% of the role in your SEO process. So um, just some great opportunities. Yeah, that's huge. And I might, um, Lauren, if you wouldn't mind putting that link as well in the chat, um, asking for a friend, <laughs> that would be great to have as a resource. Thank you. Sure. Could you repeat that for me, please? Which link would you like, I guess? Uh, um, just the web address that people can go to to update their Google My Business. Oh, they'll just have to do that 
they, they go to type their name into their browser and you'll see it on the side. And if they own it, they, if they own it, they know it. And if they don't own it, they can claim it. Great. Thank and you. if you don't own it, yeah, you should claim it because you're just really, you know, missing out on a great opportunity uh, online. Um, I always kind of say that if you have a website, but you don't direct people how to get there, it's like having a business in the middle of the desert with no signage or roads to get there. So you need to do things. Uh, having a good website is great, but you also have to have the infrastructure to get people there. Um, I just want to add, if we just go back to the other question, um, I think that most people know right now about the CARES Act and the uh, PPP loans and the EIDL loans, um, the SBA grants that they can apply for, but um, if you go to the state of Colorado website and type in the search um, grant opportunities, there is a whole spreadsheet that just has um, various opportunities, whether they're grants or loans, for our communities, whether you're an artist, um, whether you are a small business or a restaurant, um, our state actually has opportunities um, listed on the state website that um, uh, businesses and artists and people in general can apply for. So um, it's a good opportunity to step out of your comfort zone. And I, that's a great point, Tanya. And I think if you're part of a trade association like the Colorado uh, Restaurant Association or these other places, they also have uh, there's there's a ton of of big businesses and and other places offering grants all across the board. So, uh, you know, one of the things that that we, you know, um, I guess a question. This isn't on the, the thing, but if someone needs help writing those um, those uh, applications, Maureen, is there is there some resources from CMC or other places they can get helping writing those grants? Um, yeah, if, if they go to that business consulting and training link and um, put that in as that's where they need help, and then we will direct them to where they can get that assistance. Yep. And I might also add um, the Carbondale Chamber, we put together a resource on our website um, specific for entities within the financial um, sector that can help with, um, you know, helping help businesses prepare those documents. So if you need help, you know, how to um, print and create a balance sheet, for example, or if you need help with grant writing and some copy editing, um, you know, CPA resources, lender resources. So that's all on our website, carbondale.com. Yeah. And, and the one thing that I would recommend is, you know, because you know, our business is applying for a bunch of grants as well as so it's twofold. One, you want to get in quick, but you also want to get in with high quality stuff because understand there's people all across the nation who are applying for these things. So, um, all right, Atanya, are there any other opportunities to get funding while I'm waiting for loans or grants? Um, well, I, um, sorry, I went ahead and jumped into this, um, but yeah, this uh, State of Colorado website has um, Colorado opportunities for funding. Um, I would encourage people as well to check with their uh, local government municipality, whether you live in a town or a city, um, check with, um, them to see if there's any opportunities for um, any additional funding. Um, I know that here locally within um, the city and towns um, for our chamber, um, they are working on, on supporting our businesses uh, with maybe just some small micro loans or funding. Um, it's still in the early stages, um, but this is something that as our communities, uh, we're doing whatever we can to try to support um, our businesses just so they can um, stop the bleed, I guess I would say. And I'll add that the town of Carbondale has a revolving loan fund. Um, it currently has $130,000 in it and for profit businesses can apply for a minimum of $5,000 up to $25,000. And right now, um, due to the current state that we're in, they've dropped the um, interest rate down to 0%. So I will put the website in the chat. And I would just add, um, seek out your economic development people within your um, communities. They're the ones that have their pulse on what grants and funding opportunities are out there. Um, we can connect them um, and we know of them, but um, they're the ones um, kind of with the boots on the ground. And I know every chamber is different. Our chamber um, doesn't have an economic development person in the office, but we, we are able to help. Um, but we'll direct you to our economic development people within our communities.
Uh, Andrea, I'm a small business and my marketing budget is low. Is now the time to pull back on advertising and marketing? So the answer would be no. <laughs> um, and, you know, I would really encourage people specifically within the chambers. Of course, um, I am biased. I feel like this is a great opportunity to really join your local chamber if you've not done so already, or really step up and participate in the benefits that we are offering to our members. And right now to, um, you know, the Carbondale Chamber is under the impression that um, a rising tide um, Sorry, Angie, you might have to help me with this. <laughs> I'm trying to like, all right. Rising tide raises all boats. <laughs> Thank you. And I think it's just a great opportunity, chamber member or not, we are here to support our business community. We have a lot of different resources, including, um, you know, email communications and opportunities that we can help with your business promotion. Um, also, Jerry, I would be happy to toss it back to you to plug um, the opportunities that the chambers are doing in partnership with the Post Independent for e-commerce. And then also, you know, I think it's huge right now to do, um, you know, even if you have to pull back a little bit on your advertising and marketing, but still keep your name out there in front of businesses, whether that's, you know, newspaper advertising, radio advertising, Facebook, social media advertising, it is a huge opportunity right now. And you can really, you know, twist it a little bit if you, um, don't usually do e-commerce, but now you're, you know, dabbling in that. It's a great opportunity um, to, to show people what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll touch base on a couple of those things. I mean, it's really great. Uh, the, uh, the online listing is a great partnership between the three chambers of commerce uh, here, as well as uh, chambers of commerce in Pitkin County. Uh, it's just a, a great resource to where people can go and, and, and shop. And, that's being placed in the Post Independent website on it, on almost every page, as well as uh, daily in our newspaper. So it costs no money to these businesses. Um, if you don't have an e-commerce site, we know of ways to get you free or low cost ones. Um, so it's just something that, you know, it's a great way to help. And, and, you know, we've been partnering with the chambers as well as Alpine Bank on that. Uh, if you're a restaurant, we've been partnering with the Bank of Colorado. Uh, and we have all the listings in the Chamber, Linwood Chamber of Commerce, and that has listings all across the area. So there's some things like that. I, I would say there's a lot of opportunities. The one thing that's hard is I understand when there's mark, like, you know, the first thing to go is marketing budget. But the studies have shown that, that the greatest way to green market share is to, uh, if you can, advertise into, you know, these kind of times. And so, um, it, it, you know, sometimes we're playing checkers and sometimes we're playing chess. And if you have the ability to play chess right now and, and do that marketing uh, and it can be innovative. Like one of the things that's been great as we've talked with clients is we're not trying very hard to push sales. We're just talking to people. And if there's something they can do, that's innovative. Um, you know, you know, we think about legacy media and that's one way and that's great that as a lot of it. Um, but there's also a lot of opportunities to market yourself in innovative ways, low cost ways, uh, social media at the beginning of this was really thriving. There's definitely been a drop in social media uh, recently. Um, there's, I think there's a saturation of that. So you're going to want to be looking at your different ways to approach uh, marketing throughout that time frame. So, and I'd also encourage whether it's the post independent or the radio stations or these other places, uh, the, the agencies, um, you know, social media is great, but I understand like there's also other local entities that can help you as well that, that, that you can support locally as well. So um, if you can, I mean, I, I can't encourage it enough. If you have the you need to be marketing yourself either through a sweat equity and doing it yourself, or you need to um, do it, you know, uh, you, know, find, you, know, you know, put the, the monetary investment into it. But um, even if you're closed right now, you can market yourself, write some blogs, become a thought leader, do, there is no reason for you to not promote your business at this time, whether you're doing it yourself or working with somebody. And I'll piggyback off of that. I think this is where the chamber um, comes into play with supporting our local business community. Um, perhaps you don't have a marketing budget anymore. Um, we understand that. Your chamber is an opportunity for our businesses to collaborate together. And so maybe you can't afford to um, put an ad for $250 out, but your chamber can help network and collaborate with other businesses that are in the same situation and maybe you get an ad with four businesses um, that are chamber members together. So um, I think this is an opportunity for all of us to think outside of the box. And um, the chamber really drives that creativity in um, our community for businesses to really 
think non-traditionally. Um, so I would, I would just extend that, reach out to your chamber and pose that like, hey, I don't have a budget, um, but I do wanna do some marketing because I guarantee you we have other businesses that are in the same boat that are wanting to collaborate and that can share that expense. And I would say that one of my favorite, if, you're, if, if your uh, clients are B2B, um, the chamber email blasts are fantastic. That's probably one of my favorite tools and then just the networking side of it. So um, yeah, just, uh, I don't wanna go too much. I mean, it's a little, you know, uh, any other comments on, on this particular thing, Maureen? Yeah, I just wanted to um, put another plug in um, since admission for both our credit classes and our non-credit business workshops is free. People have a lot of dime, downtime right now. Um, might be a time to reinvest in themselves and their own. We hear a lot of times that um, you know people are busy doing their business and they don't have time to learn social media and they don't have time to learn these new skills. So now is a great time to learn those things. We have a class on web design. We have a class on marketing. We have a class on digital marketing. Um, we're going to be adding, again, those um, shorter time frame workshops on some of the, you know, very specific skills. Um, but it, it, this is a great time to reinvest in yourself. Thanks. Yeah, and let me just um, also piggyback on that and say, keep an eye out for more business and breakfasts. We're trying to do this uh, once a week right now, just so that we can help you guys out. Last week, uh, Trent Blizzard from Blizzard Press did present on creating um, an e-commerce site. So if you've never done that before, that's probably a good place to start. Just check out the library YouTube page. Um, we do partner with CMC, so we get lots of um, great um, uh, support from them as well in, in all this. And uh, feel free if, if there's something particular that you want to see from Business and Breakfast to throw that in the chat or at the survey at the very end. I've ditto on that. If, if anybody has like a specific workshop that they, um, you know, so we have the Business and Breakfast, which is great in an hour and a half and every week is awesome. And then the, the workshops will be a, a little bit longer and whereas the classes would be, you know, for most of the summer. So if you have any ideas on what uh, workshop you'd be looking for, let us know that we can try to, we'll be adding them throughout the summer. So. And I'm going to finish on one final thing that has nothing to do with marketing or advertising, but just something that I think can be really helpful is right now, Ted talks, all of their uh, sessions are free. Um, I got, you know, I'm in the media and I got every morning I was waking up either going to read about COVID-19 or getting lost in social media. And now I have a rule of just watching one Ted talk every morning just to start my day off. Right. And it's always inspiring. Um, and it's just a great way to start your day, um, you know, on a positive note uh, and, and also learn. So, and which I, which I reinvest, like I sent a long winded email to my leadership team today about a video I watched and told them to watch it. And we're going to have conversations about it, about how we can be a better company. So. And I'll say your, um, your local chambers, um, even those of us that are with us today, but even all the way up um, the Roaring Fork Valley, um, we've all been really um, thoughtful and I believe we're excelling at collaborating now more than ever. Um, and we were just talking before we went live, um, um, Carbondale's doing some great, um, some great stuff uh, right now that they've pre-recorded as well, that they've got live on their, um, their website um, that is really important to our business community right now. So um, I think that collaboratively, um, don't hesitate to reach out to your chambers and, and see what maybe another chamber's doing, because perhaps um, I'm not doing it down um, in Garfield, Western Garfield County, but perhaps Angie's doing it in Glenwood. So we can all kind of support each other and backfill the areas that um, our business community isn't being um, represented right now, so. Okay. Looks uh, like we have a question from someone in the audience. What is that? Um, is there one place to find all trainings, workshops, classes? I'd like to post for my parachute businesses, but I'm already lost with all with all the places I could send them. Well, one of the things that's, I'll answer that. One of the things that, that as I've listened to this and see all this stuff that I was going to talk with these guys afterwards is kind of like we did with these other places. Can we create uh, something that has, you know, a unified spot? So 
that I'm aware of, there's not one single space, but I think, you know, the great thing about our collaboration process is we hear questions like that, we talk to each other and we work together to create it. So I would, you know, that was definitely something that's on my mind. I could be wrong if there's no place, but I don't think there is. No, um, we were just chatting um, offline about the opportunity potentially to um, list all of the upcoming webinars. Um, and Angie had mentioned even including links that of previous webinars that have been recorded. Yeah. So um, yes, Jerry, like you mentioned, um, it's always great to have opportunities like this to create ideas. Um, so anyone else can jump in, but I would say, yes, uh, we're seeing the need for that. Stay tuned and we will work on something and um, share that information. Great question. So in our, um marketing department um, pulled together a list of all the classes that we're offering and it's on our main uh, web page but we can share that with the chambers as well and we're also updating it uh, weekly because things change all the time so it's um, it's not a live document that's posted but it will be updated every week um, so we can share that out so maybe or put a link on the chamber sites to what classes and because the business workshops too are still being created and will be continuing to be offered throughout the summer. So we'll get that information out. Uh, Tanya, what can I do while my business is only partially open to bring in income? Yeah, so I, this is a great question. Um, there is so much. Um, it's been touched on a little bit. Um, I have one of our local restaurants who um, who closed after a week being opened um, just in the interim. Um, I talked to him and he was just so positive. He kind of has that let's make lemonade out of lemons mentality, which I think is really hard um, for our business community right now, but he's focused more on um, revamping his menu, um, redoing his floors, doing any maintenance, um, really thinking hard about um, the setup of his restaurant and his business. Um, he's focused on his website. Um, he has put money into his marketing. Um, he's getting ready to open, um, and this is Miner's Claim. Um, they're getting ready to open uh, April 22nd, again, for curbside delivery. And he's thought outside of the box, he's going to have a live DJ um, curbside. So when people pick up their um, meals, they'll have a little bit of fun music playing. So um, I think that it's important that we stay um, positive and really um, get our businesses thinking um, more open-minded. Um, we as a chamber just started uh, a new campaign. It's called hashtag chamber rack, capital R-A-K. It's a random act of kindness and we launched it um, yesterday. Um, it's been very well received just in the last 24 hours in our community. And as a chamber, what we're doing is we're investing um, a small monetary amount to our chamber businesses. And we're not just focusing on restaurants and retail, we're focusing even on our, our service trades, our plumbers, our electricians, everybody needs something right now. Toilets don't stop flushing, showers don't stop going. Um, so we're investing a, a small monetary amount and putting a little clue out every day. And then uh, our community um, get to figure out where that money, that little random act of kindness is at. And perhaps it's for a dinner at a restaurant. Maybe it's $50 off a plumbing service for somebody, um, but it's just a way to um, not just encourage our businesses and our community to collaborate, but it's also that marketing again. It's that um, your name is out there every day. We're putting something out there um, for the business that gets racked. Um, so I think the best thing I can say is just really thinking um, differently, focusing on websites. If you've been afraid of it, GoDaddy's really easy to use as well. You get your domain, um, set up a business Facebook page. Um, I know you have indicated that those are down a bit, but I think in little pockets and areas of communities, they're actually bigger. Um, in some areas. So I think that it's just, um, it's important that we push ourselves out of our comfort zones right now and really support each other. And no idea is a bad idea right now. That's a great point that you brought up about uh, Miner's Claim. I was talking to uh, someone representing a local um, uh, liquor sh uh, shop and we were chatting and 
you know, the, you know, the guy was upset because he can't do tastings anymore. So we were just thinking about doing a, you know, a webinar where people could show like how to make drinks so instead of being a, a tasting, we can take it. And so we have this great technology. I mean, you're on Zoom right now. It's, uh, you know, there's a learning curve to it, but it's not steep, but you could, you, know, you could put on Zoom sessions. You could do a whole host of things. It's just thinking a little bit differently about this time frame. Um, Facebook Live, do a virtual um, a virtual taste testing through Facebook Live and everybody has their their beer, their glass of wine. And we are, um, that's the beauty of, of, um, of being human is that we're all constantly learning and growing. Um, so I just, I think this is an opportunity to not wallow. Um, we're all under stress. We're all under a great amount of um, anxiety. Um, but this is, this is where Chamber comes in and we can really help rally our businesses and support them with um, new ideas. I would also add to that, um, you know, you're seeing a lot of people that are offering gift cards, you know, maybe they're not open right now, but uh, one way we can support businesses is by purchasing a gift card now that can be used later. Um, today happens to be Thursday and we're promoting the talk to you later Thursday. Um, so that's, that's one thing that you can do. And uh, the Pullman, for example, on Friday, there's a great article in the Post Independent today. They're doing a beer makers dinner on a virtual beer makers dinner on Friday. So just another way of thinking outside of the box and engaging your the people that usually would come to those types of things. Um, and I, I think another another business that's adapted really well are um, gyms or exercise facilities. They're doing Zoom classes and and those kind of things online. And, and I, I could see that as something that even, even when we return to some sort of normalcy, that could still be something that I personally would take advantage of. So um, you're seeing a lot of innovation come out of this, which is really exciting. And kudos to businesses for just having the courage to try something new and, and get out there and, and do something that maybe they thought of for a long time, but just this, this really pushed them to do that. So um, I think, watch what other people are doing and see if you can get some ideas. There's some really cool stuff happening out there. And I think what something you said, uh, Angie, is really important that if this extends for uh, any sort of time frame uh, much longer, uh, people's habits will change. And so as you think about your business, like one of the things we're looking at, like if this extends three months, we know people's reading habits will change. Like if they have been, you know, if they used to pick up the paper and print all the time and now they're accessing it online, in three months, there that's going to be their new normal, and so we're just always thinking about like what will it be a new normal when this normal ends. So, be thinking about that too as you think about your business. Um, I just wanted to add a couple more ideas. I think just idea sharing is great, and it might um, create something um, for another business. But just a couple examples in Carbondale, Aloha Mountain Cyclery is doing a bike of the day, and so they're showcasing a different bike and giving the you know pointing out the highlights and the parts and things and. I have a background in consumer behavior. And so if you can't physically touch something, it's really tricky um, to know if you're, you're wanting to make that purchase. But I think they can kind of take you down that tour and give you a, a tour. So, you know, potentially if it's um, clothing or shoe retail, you know, you could definitely um, do a hands-on um, feature of that product. Also Independence Run and Hike, um, they're offering drop-off and delivery for their store purchases, but um, they've been running a promotion that ends today, so there's still time, but they're doing Strava Art, which is an app that can track your um, workout. So you do a run and you can create different artwork. And so then you submit it. It's on the Independence Run and Hike Facebook page, but it was really neat. Some people did, um, they ran and spelled out Carb or Seadale. Um, so it's really creative, just some different ways um, to promote your business. Jerry, I just want to add one more. Um, I think that um, parents right now um, are home with their kids. Uh, they're not going to probably be going back to school this year. So then you add three months for the summertime with that. So um, businesses right now have a great opportunity as well to um, develop different resources for uh, kids that are at home. So I think this is a great opportunity to bring back arts and also bring back music. So um, I've been encouraging um, our uh, art businesses to go virtual, um, put packages together, um, whether you're doing cookie making or um, you are doing a paint by numbers type thing. 
um, businesses as well with music. Um, this is the time when you can sell 10 ukuleles to parents and do a virtual um, music session to give parents an hour of reprieve from, uh, from their kids. So I think um, this can also be a, a really fun opportunity for businesses to engage as well with their communities. Yeah, we've done sessions on inbound marketing before um, and this is a great opportunity to do inbound marketing and provide thought leadership. And I would just offer, like you don't even have to, um, sometimes it even have to be related to your business, but just showing that you care. And, and, and one of the things we're working on right now is I was working with my wife the other day. She doesn't know Google Docs, she doesn't know these things, but she's trying to you know, teach our kids with all these Zoom sessions. She's getting 15 emails from the school with different Zoom sessions and it was always creating the stress. And I just created a Google Doc for her that had all of the listings in one place and all of their, their things. And then I just realized that's probably something that people, a lot of parents could use. Like, I'm familiar with it. Um, but if you, so if you just, in your life, if you've created a life hack, um, it's super easy to do a video. And then and, and just in that way, it's not about your business per se, but right now the business is caring. Um, can you show that you care about your consumers um, one way or the other? And so, uh, you know, it doesn't, like I said, this is a, for me, it's a downtime, but it's also a great opportunity to really explore different uh, methods of, of reaching out to your, your clients. Uh, we, I think we kind of touched this one already. What should I be doing while my business is closed? Um, is there anything else to add to this question? Yeah, I would like to just say that now is it, a lot of people um, might have done an initial business plan or not even done one at all. And, um, and then it just sits on the shelf. But now would be a really good time to um, come up, you know, update that business plan and do a new five year strategic goals, um, thinking outside of the box. And what other um, ways can you serve your customers? Um, what other service or product can you be offering? Um, so uh, we did touch on this, uh, but it's just time to think creatively and think outside the box and, and update that plan and where you want to be in five years and, and how do you plan for economic downturns like this. Um, so that was another thing we have been talking about offline. Thanks. I would add to that too. I think this is the time to really dig deep and, and really understand why you exist. Um, note maybe there's some things that you have been doing that you shouldn't continue or there's once again things that that you really need to start focusing on so it's it's a good time to to take that good hard look at your business and and determine who are you going to be when when this is when we're in our new world which we don't really know what it looks like but this is this is a time to start thinking about that really really a lot Uh, what is CMC doing for the communities during this crisis, Maureen? Um, so we kind of touched on some of those um, before, but again, we're taking all of our, the federal stimulus money and, and investing it back into our communities. Our communities have been so supportive um, and investing in CMC. Our president likes to say that we are our community's college. And so anything that we can do to help during this time. So besides the, the free tuition on credit and non-credit classes, um, the free tutoring, the free business consulting, um, there, we have a lot going on and we really wanna be here for our communities. And so if there's something else that we can do, we will try. Um, but if you look at that um, CMC response website, there's a whole big long list of um, one. I think one of the big things too, and a lot of people don't know this is we have what's called the president scholarship. And it's a thousand dollar scholarship that goes to every graduating senior in our district area. So our district covers five different counties or seven counties. Um, and so I think a lot of high school students, um, a lot of, college students in general are possibly rethinking what they're gonna be doing um, next fall and where they thought they might be going, they may not, they may be thinking differently and maybe thinking about staying closer to home. Um, so not only are we offering that to this year's graduating seniors, 
but any student that's graduated within the past three years, um, we're, we're extending that as well. Um, and so it's just, um, we're just trying to help people to continue on with their educational goals and doing it in um, you know, the best way for them. Uh, but again, just check out that CMC response page because there's a lot more listed there. But we're here to help however we can. Angie, what can I be doing now to help my business excel once we get to the recovery phase of COVID-19? Well, I think we've covered this topic pretty well, but um, again, I just think it's it's taking that inward approach to, once again, who, why you exist, um, what are the things that really, really matter and really are important and are gonna continue to be that way moving forward. So just really retuning your business, learning as much as you can, taking advantage of, of all the opportunities out there. There's, there's so much that you can be learning right now and um, getting yourself prepared for, for the next phase, which, which is going to be recovery. So um, I think just, just looking forward and being ready for, for that and using every single resource that you possibly can. One of the things that, that we learned in the uh, last uh, setback in 2008 uh, businesses that, uh, and this is historical, not just 2008, but we talked about it on 2008, businesses that market themselves uh, during downtimes do better during the downtime and exponentially better during the recovery. And so there is opportunity, like I know it's difficult right now, but if you can, and again, I'm not saying spend money, uh, you can, but you just need to make sure you're doing things to get your name out there on a consistent basis. So. I'll just add too, um, we had one of these these sessions a couple of weeks ago and um, our friend Chris Romer from the Vale Valley Partnership shared a quote from, um, from, from Wayne Gretzky. And he said, uh, a good hockey player plays where the puck is. A great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. So just getting ready for anticipating what's next. Any other comments on that? All right, this is a really good question. How can you stay connected with your team when everyone is working remotely? Angie? Yeah, I think this is a challenge for, for all of us, um, especially when we work in small collaborative teams, you really start to miss them. So just checking in as much as you possibly can, whether it's just FaceTime or a quick call. Um, our team tries to do at least one Zoom meeting a week. Sometimes it's a happy hour, just seeing each other's faces, there's there's something about that that just just brings that team environment back together. Um, and I think too, throughout all of this, um, my, my team has certainly grown to include, of course, my my neighboring chambers and and have I found a lot of, um, you know, people that I've worked with before, but have really embraced those, those collaborative relationships. So just, I think we all are looking for connections right now. So however, However, you can find those is is really important because um, it's it's easy to get really stuck in just doing what what you're doing. But if you if you don't stop and and reach out and connect, um, it's it makes it difficult. So um, just find whatever way you can to to connect with one another. And I'll add to that. Um, I think that you know Zoom is a great platform, um, but. Not everybody uses that app. So, you know, there are many, there's WebEx, there's um, GoTo, there's Skype. Um, I think it's been a, a real innovation for all of us, especially if you've got kids at home that are now all of a sudden, as you said, Jerry, you're thrust into um, education online. Um, I do think this is also gonna change the structure of our uh, businesses. This is something that I think some businesses really weren't willing to embrace, allowing um, uh, people to work from home. Um, so I think that this is gonna be a new innovation. We're gonna start seeing a lot more of where businesses are recognizing that there's great value um, as well in allowing people to take that time and work from home um, and perhaps not be at the office, you know, eight to five, Monday through Friday, so. It was interesting, right before this all came down, we were talking about what we should do with our lease. And we were talking about, do we need a building this big? Can people work from home? And we've, what we've realized is, nope, we don't need a building this big. People can work. I mean, some people hate it, 
I know that's the part when you stay connected is making sure if, if you uh, have people on your team who struggle with that to really touch, keep touch base with it. But it's a great point that there will be a new normal when this is done and, and embrace it. And the one thing this is going to be, uh, this is something I've done and, and it's more with Angie than anyone else. But if you're a business and you have an idea, uh, the chambers have really, you know, in my opinion, have really been the leaders in a lot of this, whether you're a chamber member or not. And so I'll call if you're a business and you're like, hey, I have this idea. I don't know who to reach out to. Uh, reach out to your chamber directors. They're gonna, they're they're so good at networking. And and poor Angie gets calls from me all the time. I'm like, hey, Angie, like I have an idea, and and she's always great at telling me if it's a good idea or a bad idea. Um, but just I can't, you know, or you know, because you know, if you just have an idea, you know, and this is a time that as communities, like one of the things we've talked about, can restaurants and uh, retail stores work together to help each other and create promotions and like you know maybe you don't have the bandwidth or the power or even the, the network to do it, but there are people here, uh, everyone on this call, uh, uh, Maureen, myself, the chambers, like we're, we're, we're always looking for ways to help our community. Um, I, I think it's, uh, you know, for, for most of us, we can't succeed without each other. Um, and, and so just continue to do that. Uh, any other pieces of advice? I mean, a social hour is great, by the way. Um, don't drink too much beforehand is a, probably a good rule of thumb. Cool. All right. Um, Maureen, I'm a, what, you, what makes this collaboration between the cities, the chambers and colleges so special? Well, I threw this question out there because I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of it. it actually, when I moved to this Valley um, 10 years ago, um, it seemed like um, each, the little city and chamber was more isolated and kind of more in competition. Um, and now I'm seeing so much collaboration and so much willing to help each other. Um, you know, CMC stretches over all of these communities. Um, so we like to be there to support however we can. Um, but I think that this crisis has even made that collaboration stronger. Um, and I think Tanya brought this up earlier is like, we can help each other. We don't all have to duplicate efforts and we can, um, you know, kind of piggyback off of what each city is doing. Um, the cities have stepped up, the chambers have stepped up. I think local individual businesses have stepped up. So, and I just think that we live in a really special place that is allowing this to happen. Um, I don't know if this is happening in, you know, the big cities or on the front range. Um, but I think this is highlighting that special collaboration. Um, it was it was there anyway, and it's been building, and this has just kind of reinforced it. So I, I just feel very lucky and honored to be part of this collaboration. And I love that. And one of the things I'll give a, a live example of that is at the chamber, Linwood Chamber, was putting together restaurant listing, and so were we. And and uh, we you know, we chatted about it, and we we're like, well, they're going to do a better job than us. Um, on, on reaching out, um, why duplicate the effort? Why can't we partner? Um, we all have limited resources right now. Uh, so instead of competing, you know, work together. And so that's a great, great, uh, like I said, there, there are silver linings coming out of this a hard time. And if, if nothing else, I'm hopeful that we become more unified as a county uh, through this. So um, I think at this point, what any questions from the audience? One thing if I might add while we're waiting, if anyone has a burning question that they're uh, wanting to type out, but I just wanted to, um, you know, remind everyone that we're in this together. We too are small businesses. We too have to make tough decisions. And at the same time, we're all human and it's very important to step away, even though this um, does not stop 24 seven. It's important to take a time out, step away. Like you mentioned, Jerry, you know, listen to a Ted talk, pick up a new book. Um, you can probably hear my children <laughs> running around in the background. So give a little grace um, to everyone. But also I saw something on social media that was really impactful to me and just the importance of supporting our small businesses right now. And you know, we always are, whether it's for our nonprofits or for um, church or school groups, but we're always running to the retail and the food and beverage businesses for a gift certificate or um, 
you know, a hat or a t-shirt or something for our silent auctions and giveaways. And now is our time as the larger community to give back and go support those businesses that have been supporting us day in, day out with all of our um, asks and our outreach. And so again, you know, if you can go support them in any way, whether it's carry out or a gift certificate um, for down the road, I just think that that's so, so important. And the last piece um, in regard to those businesses that are still operating, even if it's um, different from their day to day, remind people of the opportunities that you have, such as the touchless payment. I think that that's really important. And those are really easy opportunities that you can reach your clientele by social media. Um, if you do online ordering or if you have other systems in place, um, those are little things that um, people really are paying attention to. So, just a couple more ideas. Thanks. Any other final thoughts? Yeah, um, I think um, there are a couple of other resources that are out there for um, not just our businesses, but our community. Um, unemployment is a part of our businesses right now. Um, and there's a lot of um, misinformation out there and spam specifically. Um, so I would just encourage people to um, go to the unemployment website, colorado.gov, um, and um, you can seek out and, and search and ask your questions there um, for your unemployment. Um, reach out to your Colorado workforce locally as well. Um, ask them questions. Um, I know there's a lot of misinformation and spam as well with the government, um, the IRS stimulus checks. Um, the government just actually did an app that's very easy um, and it's irs.gov and um, you know we've been trying to post those links as well um, on our pages um, and a lot of our community right now is really concerned about um, how they're going to be paying their rent or their mortgages so um, with that um, you know there's a lot of uh, dispelling information there um, but I would encourage people to go um, just seek out uh, the Colorado Housing Financial Assistance Programs that are out there. Um, reach out to Garfield County as well. Look on the website um, for any connections there and um, reach out to your landlords and your mortgage companies. Um, reach out to your credit card um, companies and really just let them know where you're at, whether it's a, you're a business or you're doing it personally. Um, make those connections and ask for what, um, what you need help with right now. Uh, Angie, any final thoughts? Yeah, I, I think again, just to echo what everyone said, we really are all in this, in this together and it's just really been amazing to see everybody collaborate. Um, you know, our city's been fantastic to work with all of the chambers, the post independent. Um, it's, it's just really, it's really a neat thing to see. So, um, just for all the businesses out there, um, thank you for what you're doing, the, our frontline workers, our hospital workers, um, people at the grocery store, let's just give, give them a virtual high five. They're, they're working so hard for us. So um, just keep, keep your spirits high as much as you can. We have a hashtag RFV strong that we'd love for everybody to share. And just um, if you see something good out there, let's share it. And um, posit positivity is also contagious. So um, thank you, everybody. It's, it's really it's really a team effort. And we're, we're piggybacking off of the hashtag RFE strong and ours is hashtag WGC strong. So Western Garfield County strong, so. And we also have, um, we've added um, Carbondale Co strong as well. So lots of fun stuff. And then we also have these great little coloring sheets. Um, I will send this if maybe we can post this on our social media, but it's black and white and you can print it or we don't have a printer at our house, so I um, traced it on my computer screen, but I think it turned out okay. So I'll send it to you and it's um, in English and in Spanish and it just says we're in Fork Valley. Together we are strong and then a thank you. So um, I'll send that out if you are all open to publishing that as well. Uh, Maureen, any final thoughts? Um, yeah, so uh, I just wanted to keep an eye out for the upcoming business workshops. Um, there's going to be a few categories about business rating, strategic planning, um, human resource management, finances, and marketing. And so, um, and 
if there's anything that people need that's not on that list, let us know and we'll try to put it together. But we're also looking for people that have expertise in these areas to offer these workshops. Um, so if anybody's interested in um, giving back and teaching, um, please reach out and let us know. Uh, Lauren, before I, I, I call you in for any final thoughts, I would like to give a plug to the Garfield County Libraries for helping with this. But also, um, if you've not had a chance, their virtual stuff is really awesome, like ranging from some event stuff. But if, I mean, if you're like me and a nerd and you like comic books, uh, you can get them uh, on your on, on your computer and graphic novels. So um, there's just a lot of really cool resources that you can get from the library right now. Um, you know books that you could learn, uh, read, or just, you know, even video streaming uh, online uh, for free. So there's just a lot of uh, the resources abound. So uh, Lauren, any final thoughts? Uh, thank you for that plug, Jerry. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, check out our website. Um, and if you have a card, great. If you don't know your number, no problem. Just contact us. If you don't have a card, no problem. You can just fill out a form online and you get access to streaming videos, uh, like Jerry mentioned, comics, ebooks, e audiobooks, um, just all sorts of great stuff. One and, really cool uh, thing that I just wanna follow up on that is we have decided at our company to do a, a book club during this time. And I just sent an email to, to Lauren and Emily, like, do you guys have these? And they say, we don't, but we'll order some more. And so that was a great opportunity for us as a company to let our employees know that they could get the books for free um, as well through the library. So um, if you're gonna do things like that, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to Lauren or Emily, and, and uh, they were very quick on saying, Jerry, we'll, we'll, we can get that, uh, no problem. So I appreciated that. So, all right. Well, I think that's it, unless there's any questions. I didn't see any come in. So apparently you guys covered it all. Great job. And I uh, appreciate it. This will be online uh, through the, at the library YouTube channel. And uh, feel free to reach out to any of us if you have questions. So uh, have a wonderful day, guys. Uh, RV Thank strong, you. Uh, WC strong, co strong. Everyone be strong. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate everyone. Thank you guys very much. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Yes. Oh, and just one quick thing. Um, there should be a little survey at the end here. If you want um, this chat email to you, if you have topics you want to um, uh, see us have for business and breakfast, fill that out, just say, hey, I want this information. Also go on the Garfield County um, gcpld.org and uh, look under uh, Glenwood Springs, you'll see my email address, larnold at gcpld.org. I'll just send all this stuff to you if you'd like. Great, thank you guys. Great, hi everybody.